Hey, true girls and moms, it's Stacy here. Um, we've been creating a lot of cool content for you guys, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So the first thing I want you to do is if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel right now so you get all those notifications and you don't miss anything that we post. But if you have been following us, you know that we've been going live every weekday at noon with our True Girl Daily electives. And on our last Book Love episode, we actually had a special guest with us, and her name was Sarah Shear. Now, Sarah has been following the ministry for a while now, and she was really excited about an audio version of the book Lies Girls Believe in the Truth That Sets Them Free that we just released. And one reason she was so excited about that book is because when she was younger, she was diagnosed with a learning difference called dyslexia. So I got to actually sit down with Sarah and just ask her a few more questions about that and just to get an idea of what that whole process was like and how um, God helped her and what he taught her through that experience. So check out this interview. We're so happy to have you here, Sarah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your connection to True Girl? How are you connected? Of course. Um, so my sister actually did True Girl for a while. She was um, in the tour last year. And then also Bob and Dana founded Grace Prep and I go to Grace Prep. Cool. So you really are like a true girl. I true. really am. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So define dyslexia for us. And like, um, what were your initial feelings when you found out you were diagnosed with that? Yeah. So dyslexia is a genetic lifelong condition. It actually affects 20% of the population. It quite literally means that your brain is wired differently. And dyslexia is different for each person. So my dyslexia isn't going to look the same as somebody else's. Um, and I, there's also three levels of dyslexia. So it goes mild, medium, and severe. And I have severe dyslexia. So I was diagnosed in the third grade. And it was really hard for me because I kind of felt, I always knew that there was something different, I guess you could say, about me. I really hated it. Um, I didn't want to be known as the different girl. I didn't want to be, I wanted to be normal, I guess you could say. So. Got you. That's tough. Um, so what did that look like? Like before you were diagnosed, I'm sure you had some signs and you started to realize that you did learn a bit differently. What did that look like in your learning that kind of gave you some signs that something might be up? Yeah, there, there was a lot. <laughs> um, so I didn't, wow, that's actually, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> no worries, take your time. <laughs> um, so I think for me, when I realized that there was something kind of different about me was just kind of how I related to things very differently than everyone else. And I didn't know how to read. I didn't learn actually how to read until the sixth grade because I was so severely dyslexic. And I was homeschooled, then I went into private school, then I went into public school, and then I went to charter school. So I've done it all. Um, and I think one of the hardest things was just like, everyone always kept telling me to try harder. Everyone always kept telling me that I just wasn't doing my best and that I just need to put more effort into it. And I was, I, I was giving it my all. I was, I was just like, I don't understand why I'm not getting this. It was very, um, just quite confusing as a kid, not quite understanding what's happening and why you're not getting it like the other kids are. But like when somebody would teach me in a different way and I got it like that, I was like, so why am I getting it like this? But I can't get it like the other kids. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, no, totally. I can't imagine that. Just kind of looking around and everybody's on the same path. They're understanding things the same way. You're kind of like, what's up? What's yeah, up? <laughs> you're just very um, confused. <laughs> What, um, what's the hardest thing about having dyslexia? I know you kind of just mentioned that disconnect between others and how they learn, but what's something that really um, has been a challenge for you with having it? I think a lot of it has to do with shame. Like for me, I'm still mm -hmm. like, there are still some days where I'm just like, uh, like I'm definitely not very smart, you know, but it's, it's honestly the choice that you have to believe that lie or you can believe the truth, what God says about you, you know? So I think still struggling with that shame and pride because I never really wanted to ask anybody for help because I was like, 
I got this, you know, like I can do this. I don't need anyone's help, which was the exact opposite of what I needed. (laughs) Um, And so, but um, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, I got you. I totally understand that. Um, Well, let me ask you this. So what kind of learning strategies have you developed to help with your dyslexia? Like what kind of things help you out? Yeah, um, audiobooks are definitely a very big thing. I would recommend Learning Ally. Um, it's a it's a non funded organization, and it's for the blind, and it's also for kids with dyslexia. Because there's three types of reading actually. So there's um, eye reading, and then there's ear reading, and then there's you know Braille. <laughs> um, but I think like another one is is also technology. There's a lot of assistive technology out there like even on your phones, like using Siri, that's assistive technology, asking like how to spell things and speaking to typing, um, type speech to text and text to speech, that's also really helpful. Got you, those are good suggestions for sure. Um, How have your parents like been in this whole process? Like how have they supported you? What kind of things have they done to help you out a little bit? Um, I would definitely say that my parents, when I was first diagnosed, they didn't really quite know what to do, which is, which is, you know, understandable. What, what do you do? <laughs> so I would definitely say research about it, um, research about what kind of kid you have with their learning difference, you know, um, and then kind of just support them. I would honestly say the number one thing that has helped me a lot with my parents is them having patience. Patience is such a big key to um, helping a kid with a learning difference because they're just as frustrated as you are when they've told you about the same thing 50 times over and you're like, I'm still not understanding. And the parents like, I've said this to you 50 times. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you just have to have really big patience and understand that it's going to take some time with them. Um, Yeah. Got you, got you. Um, okay, what's one thing that God has really shown you or taught you um, through having this and through this experience? Wow, that is a very loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, God has taught me so much throughout um, my journey with dyslexia, and I know like, I'm still going to be learning things throughout um, after I leave high school. I am pretty nervous about leaving high school just for obvious reasons. It's scary, you know, big transition. Um, but I think one thing that God has taught me was he is always going to be there, whether you know he's not, you know? Right. Like, when I, when I was first diagnosed with dyslexia, I was like, God, why did you give me this learning difference? Like, I don't understand. I feel so worthless. I feel so stupid. Like, I'm just not understanding. Why am I not getting this? And, you know, like, I was just so frustrated at him. I was like, why? And then not until I realized after I went through all of this hardship that I had when I was younger, um, that it actually was a story to tell for other people and to actually um, raise awareness about dyslexia and saying like, God designs people. um, I don't know if this is going to come out right, but I'm going to try my best. (laughs) Um, We're we were designed to be perfect and there are flaws that everyone has because we fall short of the glory of God, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I really honestly think that we're like dyslexia is a gift for me now. I used to think it was a curse, but now I think of it as a gift Mm -hmm. and that God gave me. Like if I had the choice to say um, if I'm dyslexic or if you had to choose not being dyslexic, I would choose being dyslexic all over again. Hmm. I know that there are other girls out there who are probably going through the exact same thing that I did when I was younger, and I, I never want that to happen, and I think God gave me the courage and the story to go out there and share it. That's deep, ma'am. Way to change your perspective. We all should do that, because it's, um, it's a lesson in everything we go through, and God has us go through things for a reason, mm-hmm. so that's really cool that you're using it um, to glorify him and just to show what he's shown you through that, you know? It's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so for those other girls that you just mentioned, what advice would you give them? The girls that are going through this, that are recently um, diagnosed with this, what would you tell yeah. them? So I would say one thing is, is I know I said this on the other one, but um, believe that your learning difference doesn't make you stupid. You are actually very smart. Just because you learn differently doesn't mean that you're stupid. It just literally quite 
literally means you learn differently than everyone else. Um, another one is, it's just recognize that you have strengths. It's not all weaknesses. When you recognize that you have a weakness, you also have to recognize that there are strengths that come with that and you can make your weaknesses stronger. Ask for help. Do not be prideful. <laughs> that was my mistake that I made. Um, ask for help because we were designed to be in relationship with other people and you know, we're sinful, you know, we make mistakes. So don't be afraid to go out and ask for help. And I say one last little advice that I would give. Um, this one really honestly changed my life. And all of this advice wouldn't mean anything if you didn't listen to this last one. Find your identity in God. Find mm -hmm. him. You need to know like how you believe what you believe in. Um, take risks and be open and vulnerable with other people. Um, I think a lot of my time when I was younger, I spent, I spent very alone and I felt very isolated because I'd never wanted to try anything just because I knew I wasn't going to be good at it. Um, but one time I had enough courage to actually try out for the soccer team in my high school, my freshman year. <laughs> and I started crying like right away because I was like, I'm not getting this. I'm not understanding. I'm so stupid. Those lies kept coming back into my head. And a senior girl came up to me and was just like, you're not supposed to get it the first time. Mm. You're supposed to like make mistakes. That's why we're here. That's why we're practicing, right? You right. need to get back up on the horse and keep moving. Um, and so honestly, that moment really changed my perspective on everything. And I started getting back up on that horse and just kept moving and kept being vulnerable. And even though you're going to get hurt sometimes and you feel like you're stupid, um, you're not. You just have to keep reminding yourself of the truth that is in God's word. That's beautiful. Giving yourself that grace. Um, thanks for sharing your heart with us, Sarah. It's not easy to talk about things like that, but I thank you so much for being willing to just be open and to encourage other girls who are going through the same thing and to, um, to encourage parents who are trying to help those girls. So thanks for sharing your heart. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Sarah as much as I did. Just so grateful for her willingness to share her journey and just all that God has taught her through that process. And moms, this video is especially for you if you have a daughter that you're working through a learning difference with, or if you know another mama who has a girl that she's working through that with. Um, just go ahead and share this. It's really cool that we were able to hear from a girl who's actually been through it and who's learned some amazing lessons because of it. So feel free to share this video and tune in for the other videos we have coming your way very soon.